Uh, let's turn now to our top take. It is Deutsche Bank. It's been 10 years since the financial crisis. And while most major banks emerge from that dark period with new life or life period, <laughs> uh, Deutsche Bank uh, came out of it uh, seemingly carrying a dark cloud over it just for years. And now the reckoning, a fifth of its workforce will get cut. It's exiting the global equities business. It's taking a 7.4 billion euro charge. So Miles, as, as you looked at this today, yep. I mean, there's so much to unpack out of it. Uh, I guess what was most startling to you about it, or what do you think is most instructive to actually be paying attention to as they move forward? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, when I sent around that, that note this morning, maybe it was a little overwrought, right? But I think it kind of goes to this, this principle of like, when you make a big decision, you can, you can undo that decision, but the consequences of that, good or bad, will always exist, right? So when Deutsche Bank decided in the 1990s that it wanted to be a major global investment banking player, which wasn't exactly what its core was. It wasn't really towards the, the roots, the skill set, right? It, did, it made some big acquisitions along the way to become the Deutsche Bank we know today. Um, it, it can't just go and undo that without enduring an incredible amount of pain. I mean, we had the stock chart up there down 86% in a decade. So basically, um, you know, not wiped out, but for all intents and purposes, um, it's just a shell of what it once was. And so it was a German lender, right? You go to Germany and there are Deutsche Banks. Um, but in the US, you would think of it as the company that will, you know, the joke in the mid aughts is that they'd underwrite anything, mm -hmm. right? Deutsche Bank will take on anything. They'll do anything. Um, and guess what? That blew up spectacularly in the crisis. And so as they try to reinvent and reorient themselves and focus on uh, their commercial lending and they don't want to be in the equities business anymore and they want to get out of iBanking and they want to reshuffle their leadership around certain things, you can do all that, but you can't just go back to what you were, right? You can't go back to the way it was. And now, of course, part of the reason they're making the moves today is new regulatory environment, right? Regulations require certain quality asset ratios and Deutsche Bank's just not going to be able to meet those unless they create this bad bank, yep. which they're doing. What do they um, call it? I like it, capital release unit. Exactly. So unless they have their capital release unit, I want which- I to have my own which I think, release Yeah, exactly. Unit. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I downsize the balance sheet. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think it, it just shows how hard it is yeah. um, when even 10 years later, you still haven't really figured out what you did. So definitely you, you make decisions and you go down a road uh, and it is hard to go back and it sometimes is hard to go forward. When I look at this, I do think how much of it is ECB specific and Eurozone specific mm -hmm. and for the banks here in the US, um, you know, look, it's not that different of a picture, but it's pretty different. And it's been pretty different for 10 years. And it's really exemplified in the returns that U.S. banks are up like 200 percent in 10 years. Right. And Europe banks are up. Uh, what is it? It's a fraction of that. 21 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, and just the eurozone in particular is so plagued right now that that's just one more hindrance for them. Like, could they have made it if if your home base I mean, granted, you're the most powerful and stable economy right. in the Eurozone, right. especially given Brexit, but if you well, weren't there, would it have been different? I mean, the most capital that the Fed, you know, the Fed put out all these swap lines yeah. during the crisis, right? And their, their biggest swap lines, some of their biggest swap lines were to BNP and Deutsche mm -hmm. Bank, right? I mean- the, So they had the help. Right, they had the help because they needed the help. I mean, these, so to that point, I guess, I wouldn't so much blame the ECB as I would say, um, imagine Bank America said our next growth market is to become, you know, so Bank America has branches in the US, let's imagine yep. they never had an iBanking operation. They said, we're gonna start iBanking by going to Germany and buying their biggest investment banks, yes. and, right? And now they're waiting for the ECB to bail them out. Well, that wouldn't exactly work, right? So that's kind of, it's not a perfect analogy, yeah. but that's sort of what happened here. And so. I mean, I don't know. I just think that it, it, it again, it shows that every time we think we're past the crisis or that the impacts of that are, are not with us anymore, that's not true. Yep. And right? that's we're why I, and I feel that way just because as you're retrenching and you're going back to your knitting, your yeah. knitting is harder than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Exactly. Where you are. Yep. Uh, so I, I just they have certainly uh, a lot of challenges ahead of them. But the capital release unit. Great name. Don't forget. I want to know who the consultant who came up with that one. Tremendous.